What is up, Pro Guides family? How are we doing? I am your host, Sergeant Frost, and today we have a very informative video on a key aspect of Valorant. Today, we are going to be bringing you guys an updated economy guide in Valorant. But before we get into today's video, you guys know what time it is. That is right, it is time for our question of the day. Today's question is, do you think any weapons in Valorant need a price adjustment? Personally, I think the Bulldog should be cheaper. For what the gun is worth and how much damage it can output compared to its counterparts, the Bulldog is clearly inferior compared to the competition in its class. I believe it should be lowered in price to compensate for it. Let us know in the comment section down below if you think any weapons need price adjustments or not. Now let's jump straight into this video. One of the main focuses of this video will be highlighting the new economy changes that were made in patch 1.11. Before these most recent economy changes in Valorant, when you would lose a round on attack or defense and save your kit, you would receive the same loss bonus as everyone else who did or did not die on your team. And this loss bonus was starting at 1900 credits and scaled up to 2900 credits. If you were to compare this system to CSGO, it kinda works differently. If you would lose a round in CSGO but you survived, you didn't receive a loss bonus at all. In CSGO, you would get no money as an attacker for just saving at the end of a round. That's why it could be a crippling blow to your team if the defense were to win in a convincing manner early. This would in turn force the attacking team to full save the next round and it would lead to better economic control for the defense in the long run. In Valorant, however, it is near impossible to put economic pressure or control on either team because of the loss bonus being universal to both sides regardless of round outcome. Now with the changes in patch 1.11, if you force a player to save and they lose the round, they receive a reduced amount of credits at 1000. This is a significant change as this is a big gap compared to the previous system where you received 1900 credits at a minimum for your round loss bonus. Here is a quote directly from the Riot game patch notes explaining their thinking and philosophy behind this change. These changes are intended to increase richness in decision making regarding when it is worthwhile to save your gear versus to go for the round win. Additionally, this will allow teams that can secure round wins to more effectively chip away at the economy of opponents that opt to save out of expensive weapons on a round loss. In my opinion, the reason Riot went for these changes was to try to encourage players to go for the clutch every round. And what they were trying to prevent was to not promote players to immediately go into hiding and save their weapon the moment a round looks unwinnable for them and their team. Having players perpetually save makes it really hard to break a team's economy, which will make it feel like the winning team is very oppressive in the long run because they can always have weapons. These changes will make rounds more competitive because you are now incentivized to go for the win every round since you will now be penalized in the round loss bonus if you decide to run away. If you want more help learning about how you can improve your economy management in Valorant, make sure you check out ProGuides.com. You can quickly upload your gameplay VODs on our website and we have coaches online 24-7 who will quickly get back to you and help you on your journey towards improving in Valorant. ProGuides.com will teach you the necessary skills to rank up faster, enjoy the game more, and receive premium help from our online coaches. You can book a session whenever you need it according to your schedule. No more time being stuck in your ELO. Head over to ProGuys.com to begin your journey to the rank of your dreams. Now that we have established all of the new changes brought into the game with patch 1.11, let's talk about how these changes in weapon price adjustments affect the buy meta and the game overall. Ever since our last economy guide a few months ago during the beta, a lot of weapons have undergone price adjustments to keep balance and stability in the gun meta. Here are a few notable changes we have seen in recent patches. The judge's price was increased from 1,500 credits to 1,600 credits. The heiress's price was decreased from 1,700 credits to 1,600 credits. The operator saw a huge increase from 4,500 credits to 5,000 credits. And finally, the Guardian has been subject to so many changes as it sits currently at 2,400 credits down from 2,700 originally. All of these changes were made early in Valorant's life cycle to hopefully keep peace and balance in the game's gun meta for years to come. Most recently, the two biggest changes that have had the biggest impact on the meta are the Operator and Guardian price changes. Starting off with the AWP, this sniper received a slew of nerfs in patch 1.09 after the community clamored that the AWP was too powerful and needed some adjustments to bring his power level back down to earth. One of the changes Riot made that impacted the economy of Valorant significantly was increasing the AWP's price from 4,500 credits to 5,000 credits. This created a large shift in the Valorant gun economy because 5,000 credits is a hefty investment for a weapon that came hot off the presses with nerfs. The AWP is now a risky purchase in most situations because losing a gun to an enemy that costs you 5,000 credits is going to put a big hurt on you and your team's economy. If you aren't at the price cap of 9,000 credits going into the round, purchasing the AWP can do you more harm than good if you aren't confident you can stay alive and collect frags with it. The AWP has seen a slight decrease in pick rate, and that is because of its overall effectiveness with the new nerfs have hindered it from dominating like it did before. And in turn, this makes most players wary of buying the gun if they aren't extremely ahead in the game to begin with. Now moving on to the Guardian price changes and how they affected the economy. The Guardian has been a controversial weapon in Valorant. Some people say that it's a usable weapon that's balanced, and some people believe that it's useless and overpriced and needs buffs and tweaks. Riot has spent the past several patches tweaking the Guardian's stats and one of the most notable changes that came was its price decrease. The Guardian went from being 2700 credits at launch to 2400 credits after two different price drops. 
Riot wanted this gun to not be forced to compete with the Vandal, Phantom, and Odin, so they made it a more viable buy through decreasing its price. In my opinion, this price decrease is a great start for moving the Guardian towards being a meta gun. Lowering the price tag means this weapon can be bought on save rounds as a slightly more expensive alternative to the Bulldog. This price decrease did two things that shifted how the Valorant economy meta works. The Guardian's price drop made it less competitive with the main automatic rifles and gave it more breathing room by putting it up against worse competition in its relative price range. On defense and offense, the Guardian has a lot more potency and effectiveness at holding angles and fragging people at long range compared to the weapons that are similarly priced to it. The Guardian is also a one-shot headshot, which puts it at a significant advantage damage and price-wise compared to the Bulldog, Spectre, and Judge. Overall, the price decrease buffed the Guardian, and it also slightly buffed the save and light by meta by adding a more versatile and effective gun to the sub-2500 credits category of weapons. As for the other price changes to weapons in Valorant, the Eras went down in price to 1600 credits and the Judge went up in price to 1600 credits. Both of these price changes were just adjustments to make these weapons fit better with their rivals of similar price ranges. Now that we've covered all the new changes, tweaks, and additions to the Valorant economy meta, let's get back to the basics of how you can manage your team's economy. Valorant has been out for several months now, and many players who had no competitive FPS experience are now caught up on the basics of this game. One thing we must reiterate for new Valorant players and old veterans from CSGO is that managing your team's economy is the difference between winning and losing a game. Remember, it is our economy, not my economy. What is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. This is a selfless mindset you need to have when it comes to managing your team's economy if you want to win games convincingly. Now, starting off with some basic numbers for new players, every first round you will start off with 800 credits. This is called the Pistol Round. You have the options to choose between several pistols, light armor, and your agent's abilities to start off this round. A standard combination of starting loadouts a player can choose from depending on their agents are as follows. You have full utility, which is buying all of your utility and keeping the standard pistol. You have armor utility, which is buying light armor and a few utilities of your choice while keeping the standard pistol. And you have the final and most popular loadout of ghost utility, which is buying the ghost pistol and your choice of utility. A few off-meta ways you can also start off the pistol round include buying non-traditional gun options such as the Shorty, Sheriff, or Frenzy for a surprise play. But we do not recommend doing that because if your cheese attempt fails, you give away a crucial pistol and you cost yourself more money than you had to. Winning the pistol round is crucial because it will set back the enemy team's economy for at least a round and will prevent them from being able to buy full guns, armor, and utility until round 3. A standard pattern you should learn is after winning a round, look at your enemy team's economy. If their economy reset and they all have below 2500 credits, they will typically be saving or life buying to prepare for the following round. The more rounds your team can chain together consecutively will force the enemy team to constantly go through this process of resetting their economy, and it will force them to play at a gun disadvantage for most of the game. Learning to coordinate your team to play well enough to rattle off a streak of round wins is the fastest and easiest way to win a game, due to the enemy never having enough firepower to fight back unless they get lucky or your team throws a round. Now the best way to set up your economy for success is through dominating a round and losing as few of your teammates as possible in the process. When you get a kill in Valorant, it will give you 200 credits no matter what gun you are using. For comparison in CSGO, different guns give different amount of money values per kill, which regulates how much money a player can stockpile if they continue using that gun for most of the game. In Valorant, this is not the case, and every frag you earn gives a modest 200 credits. While we are on the topic of dominating rounds, a bomb plant will give 300 credits to all of your teammates both dead and alive, and a round win will always give you 3000 credits for all of your teammates both dead and alive as well. Remember, there's always a helpful minimum credits next round graphic when you pull up your shop. This is for if you ever have trouble managing what state your economy is in now and in the future. Closing out our guide, we have to talk about how save rounds now affects your purchases in the future. Saving is a tactic that requires patience and making smart deliberate choices. You have to look at your team's economy and know when to full save and when to light buy. Knowing why, when, and how to properly save will keep your economy intact and will always give you a chance to buy some form of an upgraded gun to defend yourself every round. When you lose a round, it's best not to buy any weapons immediately after. Be smart with your credits and budget yourself. In the next round, you should only buy light armor or just utility to give yourself a chance to survive a close range gunfight with your classic pistol. Learning how to live on a budget and win engagements with a ghost pistol is a great way to always keep your economy out of the dumps. And when you win a round, don't go crazy and buy an AWP or an Odin prematurely to start the round. If you still have your rifle, look to see if you need to buy one of your teammates first. Learning to do this as a habit will keep your teammates happy, your economy happy, and you happy after you collect a game win. If your teammates are fine on weapons, look to replenish your armor and see if you will still have credits left over if you repurchase all of your abilities. If you have enough money to do all of that and still have credits left over, congratulations, you manage your spending well and you're in a good shape to win the game with smart spending and economy management. Well everyone, that's all we have for our updated economy guide.
If you liked the video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. We upload new videos just like this one every single day, and the best way to stay notified of that is by ringing that notification bell. And don't forget to check out ProGuys.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. Remember to stay safe out there, and I'll see you all again very soon.